Hi there, welcome to Chemistry 3007 Approximate Wave Functions from the University of Western Australia. I'm now going to, in the previous uh, lecture I talked about the overlap of two um, determinant wave functions, but now we're going to do a more tricky integral, only slightly more tricky. Uh, it's called a one electron integral. Uh, a determinant a matrix element between one electron matrix elements. Now remember, the Hamiltonian for a system comprises one electron terms, for example kinetic energy and nuclear uh, electron attraction energies. They involve the coordinates of one electron and two electron terms. Uh, the only two electron term is the two electron repulsion integral we're going to talk about the one electron integrals. So here they are. Here's the determinant wave function matrix element psi times a one electron operator. You can see here H. It doesn't matter what this function is. It could be a kinetic energy or nuclear attraction energy or even both of them. The key point is that that's a function of one of the electron coordinates Xi and this is summed over all electrons and it's integrated with psi again. I'm going to show that this integral over all n electrons with these anti-symmetrized product wave functions actually turns out to be a sum of integrals over the individual orbitals in that product wave function, phi i h phi i. And we write that even more simply as just a matrix element h sub i i. Now this is a symmetric term because all electrons are identical. If I permute any of these electrons in the summation it doesn't change it. So the Hamiltonian, at least the one electron terms in here, it doesn't depend on the order in which we label the electrons. It shouldn't because all electrons are identical. Let's see how we can prove this. Proof. Let's consider just the ith term in this summation first. Not the sum over n, but just h of xi. So here I've put it in the middle. So psi, h of xi, psi, no summation. So let's use our previous result. Anti-symmetrizer on the left, anti-symmetrizer on the right. We don't need it on the left. So we'll write our product of orbitals on the left. And on the right, we have the anti-symmetrizer except for its uh, normalization factor. Great, no problem there. Now, um, let's consider, as usual, all possible permutations. First, PU being the identity. So if PU is a do-nothing uh, permutation, we will get phi1 integrated with phi1, phi2 integrated with phi2, phi n integrated with phi n. But wait, the ith term in the middle will have phi i I've written it here, integrated with h of xi and phi i. All these other ones don't involve h of the ith electron because we're only considering the ith electron in here. So somewhere in the, in the list, if i is the fifth one in the list, will be phi i h phi i. And this is the h i i term that we get. Uh, that's what we get, h i i. So this is equal to HII, no sum over I. I've got a, a J in there, so there's another typographical error. Sorry about that. All right, this is great. We've actually already got the answer. Now, if we sum up all of those H's over X, HXI, we will get some HII. So that's proved. It would be proved if all the remaining ones were zero. And you can see what's going to happen, can't you? It's like the overlap. Let's consider the case when PU is a swap of two electrons. Uh, for example, swapping I and J. In that case, we saw what happened before. We would get phi1 with phi1. There's a typographical error. We do get a minus sign because it's a single swap. We have phi i xi on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, the variable, the the function phi j x j, what used to be that, now becomes phi j x i, and we have to integrate that over uh, the same integration variable x i, and that will give you 
phi i h phi j h i j that's the matrix element h i j but wait there's a partner because we swapped xi to xj, there will be a term on the right, which is phi i xj. Now there's no hii term in here, because we're not considering a summation, right? So we have a phi j xj, no change on the left. This is phi i xj on the right. Okay, we integrate that, but wait, it's phi j with phi i, i. so this is zero by orthogonality. So yes, this part isn't zero, but this part is zero. If we have one zero in this term, it doesn't matter about the minus sign, it doesn't matter about that, the whole result's zero. And that always happens. Whenever we have a swap that isn't the identity, there's always going to be a mismatched term over here, and there's going to be a match term which is not zero, but the important thing is there's going to be a mismatch term which gives you zero. So you can see that everything except for the identity permutation gives you zero. Now the result is easy to see. When we sum that up, all the unit permutations, we just get HII. Fantastic, isn't it? N factorial terms squared are all eliminated to give us just one term. How fantastic is that? See you later.